good. Let's talk about fittings and valves and the friction loss due to these two things right here. We're going to use HFF instead of HFS. So besides the losing pipe, we have losings, fittings, valves and other devices that are installed in the piping system. This is mainly due to shape, for example, this guy comes right here and then it comes a small diameter or this is a splitting but of course the shape affects then the fluid hits right here and you lose energy and so on. So in the past block we covered a little bit theory on fitting some valve, hopefully you remember or you've seen that. If you haven't seen that before, go to block number two. Here's where I explain why do we need fitting some valves, what are the common types of fitting some valves in the industrial application. And in this one, we're going to actually study the friction loss of these elements. So imagine you have this system and you want to move the fluid from the return and it goes here, you need to pass it through here and then you have a elbow and then you have a valve valve and then you have here. So how do you, we already know how to calculate these losses of, of the pipe, but how do we calculate each loss of this? We're going to see this right here. Also here, we already know how to calculate this huge pipe right here, but when it encounters this element or fitting right here, how do we do it? How does these valves make friction loss and this element right here? Well, we're going to use this approach, which is very similar to the one on the pipes. You can see there is a head of velocity to the square power divided by 2. But instead of having FLT, which is the friction factor, the length of the pipe, and the diameter of the pipe, of course this does not make sense to a valve. It does make sense uh, this type of friction factor. And we're going to use this constant, K which is a value they get experimentally from many experiments. So imagine you have this pipe and you want to calculate the friction loss here. They did the mechanical energy equation balance right here, the inlet of the valve, the outlet of the valve, and all the energy lost was this right here. And they check out how the energy loss depends on the velocity and they got this constant right here. And the interesting part right here is that the value of k does not depend on the Reynolds number. So k is constant, and even though if you have a high speed or a low speed, a high profile of velocity and so on, Reynolds number will not be affecting the k value. So that's awesome. We can have a velocity, I don't know, maybe 10 meters per second. And we may have a velocity of 1 meter per second. And we will still be able to use the same value of k. K is a dimensional, has no dimensions. So therefore, velocity to the square, you know it's meters to the second power divided by seconds per the, uh, to the second power as well. That means joules per kilogram. Nice. It's also proportional to the square, so more speed, more friction loss. Good. A small note on nomenclature. When I use HF, it's the total friction, guys. That means the friction of the pipe ball, which is HFF, and the friction of the fittings and valves, which is HFS. Recall that we also have this value HL, which is essentially just the value of HF, which is this one right here, divided by gravity. You divide this value, which is meters to the second power to seconds, second power as well, seconds, oops. If you divide it by gravity, you will cancel these second squares and these meters to the second power and you get only meters. And of course, if you're using English system, you are using feet. Okay. This is also expressed as I showed you before, as this, or also common to say feet or only. I lose, I don't know, one meter due to this pipe or due to this fitting or this valve and so on. We still we'll be working with the mechanical energy equation we will still use joules per kilogram or the meter or feet nomenclature and where is it? okay it is very common also to use the HF 
equation which is this this is my favorite but if you're using meters you will need to divide by gravity so that's why in many books you're going to encounter this nomenclature they have the k divide uh, which multiplies the velocity head and this gravity so don't get scared when you see that gravity and you ask yourself I've been studying only this value right here I never seen gravity here this is due to the fact that they want to calculate it directly in meters here you will have joules per kilogram so if you are using the mechanical energy equation as I use it which is joules per kilogram you should use this equation and if you are using it I don't know maybe meters or fit, which is very common in the pumping industry, well, be sure to use this equation here. And there, I got this question of one student one day, and he asked me, imagine this balance. We have point A, we got point B, we're going to do the balance on this uh, elbow, and he tells me there's no pressure drop, which actually there is a pressure drop, but let's ignore it. The height is so small that so you can ignore it. There's no pump, there's no turbine. The velocity is the same because they have the, let's say, the same diameters. So, why, how do you get this HF value? Is it this value equal to zero? And he was like, what the fuck, guy? What do you, how can you have no friction loss? And I then tell him, that the interesting part right here is that this is actually energy going out. So the energy of the system is maintained. No, the energy of the system is actually the energy inside plus the energy going out. The energy going in plus the energy going out. So this energy going out is very common to name it friction. So just keep that in mind guys, this is an open system, energy goes, so maybe you have an inlet of work, which in this case we don't have, and we have an inlet of energy. So in this case guys, we are losing energy and it makes a lot of sense because we are having friction. So don't get twisted on that, don't get uh, worried, or it's not that complex, just know that this energy is energy lost, being lost to the outside. Okay, and... Yeah, we have it right here. That's everything for this. In the next video, we're going to check out a little exercise on how to calculate the friction loss. This was a free preview. If you want to get full access, go to my incompressible flow course. The link is in the description of the video. You will get all access. Not only that, you get a very straightforward, uh, user-friendly interface. So, for instance, you were analyzing or studying pumps you have it here the pump block and then you have the sections if you're for example studying the types of pumps you can go here and you have all the classes right here not to mention that you also have introduction and conclusion of every one of these so for instance if you were studying positive displacement pumps the video is right here if you were studying positive displacement pumps in rotatory and reciprocal are also included here Centrifugal pumps, which is a very important topic in this course, you have it right here.